Hey everyone, Hans here again, and today we're building a pretty exciting data set around recruiting or recruitment for which we'll be exploring Glassdoor and we'll be tying in tools like Epify, um, Clay, obviously, and a bunch of other really cool things that I'm pretty excited about showing you to build a data set that will help us analyze the interview process of companies that we want to target to help us score them based on that interview process. We are able to see how many candidates are rejecting them, how many candidates they are rejecting, what types of questions they're asking during the interview process. And based on that, we're able to score these accounts and we're able to see whether or not they will be a good fit for a tool like, for example, a uh, recruiting or recruitment platform. So very excited to show you what we're building today. So. Let's dive in. Now here's part of the data set that I already built. So basically I went to Clay, I grabbed their Series C funded companies uh, table as a base, just because I wanted to show you how this works. Then uh, what we're going to do is we want to see from all these companies what their interview process looks like, uh, maybe the types of questions they're asking, how people generally feel about the entire process. So imagine your, um, your company like Workable or, you know, a Workable competitor company similar to Workable, you're in the recruiting space, the recruiting software space, and you want to put together a campaign targeting companies based on their interview process. Maybe people generally speaking aren't really really happy with the structure of it, or they feel that maybe the follow-up could have been better or things could have been more clear, the scheduling could have been better. So you just want to be able to identify companies that overall aren't doing really well on the recruiting side. And uh, that's a pretty big pain because um, these companies, they're, they're going through a lot of interviews and they're spending a lot of time interviewing candidates and they're not able to find the right candidates that either match their company culture or that um, that are willing to say yes to them or maybe they have an issue with with not being able to really structure their interviews in a way that that works for the candidates so obviously a lot of things and a lot of problems that we that a software like this or a similar tool could um could help recruiters tackle, but we're going to be focusing just on the data side for today. And that's what we're uh, building out here. So we have the table here in clay. Now, what we want to do, we find, want to find the glass door page for all of these companies right here. There is no real um, connector, let's say for that in clay, there's no available data source as far as I know. The, so uh, instead, we're going to be using the Google search scraper. So we're going to perform a search and I went to Glassdoor already and I um, explored the URL structure. So the interview related stuff that you can see here on the interview page, which is clearly really valuable, like how many people think it's negative or neutral or all of this um, that is behind the glassdoor.com slash interview page and then um, each company has a unique identifier. And then the um, the general company information is at glass.com slash overview, overview slash company name. So to get there, um, I mean, it's not directly company name, obviously, because there, there are different ways that companies uh, have added themselves to Glassdoor. So there are basically different ways that that can be uh, structured. So what we're doing, we're searching on Google. So in this case, we perform a search for site, um, glassdoor.com slash overview, and then the company name. And that finds us the company name or the actual company um, about 100% of the time, maybe 95. So these are the company pages for these companies. So that's a great start. But we also want to do the same for interviews. So here, right here, we pretty much um, do the same thing where we go to, um, we do a search, use a search operator called site and then glassdoor.com slash interview and then the company name and we get their interview page. So that gives us um, pretty much all the information we need to start our data set. Then we grab these URLs right here and we're gonna take them out of clay for a bit. Um, and that's just a quick note there. I see a lot of people, they try to solve everything from within clay which um, is not always the most efficient way. Jumping between tools isn't really um, something that, that a lot of people enjoy. 
but it it does make things in this case a lot more efficient to take this from clay you build the base there in clay then we're going to take it to appify from appify we're going to take it into google sheets and from google sheets back into clay which sounds like a lot of work but compared to how we would be doing it otherwise if we would try and do everything in clay it was it's just it wasn't going to happen so we take all these URLs right here and then Appify there is, um, I'm using the advanced Glassdoor scraper. There are a few other options out there, but I tested this one, it performed well, so I, I stuck with it. Now what we do here is we go um, into here and then we go to bulk edit and we copy and paste our URLs in here. I have about 200 and something is URLs. Now, if you're going to do this at scale of say five, 10,000, 20,000 companies, then you're going to have to batch things up a little bit, but um, uh, that shouldn't be an issue either, honestly. Now here I added a few, um, a few settings and I want to make sure that we get the salary stats as well. I'm not using them later on, but we can use those to then say, okay, um i see you know you're um uh you're either rejecting this many candidates or you have this many open roles so you know based on that and your average salary we can make a calculation and bad hires will cost you this much for example we make sure that you're not making any bad hires that's one angle you can take there then under um, advanced options i used the data center which turns out is not the, the best way to scrape um, Glassdoor. And I will show you why. Well, there are two reasons why uh, scraping Glassdoor is pretty tricky. Now, um, just for, for now, going forward, you should be choosing the residential proxies. I, I, I reached out to the makers of the, um, of the, the actor right here. And they said, if you use residential proxies, it will go better. Because basically, after about 70 uh, scrapes of Glassdoor, uh, we got blocked uh, with residential proxies that shouldn't happen. Then that's it. You save and start. And then once that is running, this is, so these are reviews that I scraped and these are regular uh, pages that I scraped. I will show you what that looks like in just one second. But um, this is the output. And um, as you can see here, at some point, we got a lot of errors. So we basically got um, got blocked. But by using the um, the, the residential proxies, that uh, that's to help you work around that. Now, one other issue that um, that they have, and um, that segues nicely into me showing the actual data, is that. Um, and I didn't dig too deep into this, but this seems to be the case that for every single visit you make to a Glassdoor page, they add this unique, let's say, string right here to the end of the URL. So that makes things a little bit trickier for us here because we have this really big data set right here, right, with all the reviews. So there's about 600, um, let me see. Yeah, about 700 results in here, but a lot of, let's say, duplicates. So for each review that was scraped, it will create a new row. So all these rows right here, for example, let's say the first eight, nine rows, they're for the same company. <sighs> Excuse me. And now we obviously want to line those up um, behind the actual company, or at least, you know, align them with the right company and make sure that we can... Uh, attribute them to the right company and analyze them later. Then um, here's a sheet with all the companies that we scraped from Glassdoor. And um, uh, then here is the really big scrape that we did. So this should show you what you get if you scrape a regular Glassdoor page. You get all the awards, that, those types of things, which in our case aren't really useful. But you also get information about the company. You get some pretty good competitor information, which is interesting. You get the company description when it was found headquarters. Nothing too exciting that you cannot get anywhere else. But you also get the overall rating of the company. So how happy people are about working there, how people feel about the CEO. Now, um, how do you feel about, you know, the general business outlook? about the career opportunities, that type of thing. So those are all things that you can use in your scoring and in your outreach. And there, there are a lot of different ways you can obviously use that. I, uh, if I would go to all that, this would be a, a three hour long video. I won't do that to you. So um, I'll, skip, I'll skip that, but maybe I'll do another video on that. 
Now, there are other things that are pretty useful. So the revenue here is self-reported. So that's usually pretty accurate. And then company size, that type of thing. Now, then if we go into here, let's say reviews, um, then what we did, so here, as you can see, it's all the same page, right? So it's all the same company, Excel data interview, but each and every one of them has this unique string behind it the unique text behind the unique identifier, however you want to call it. So that makes it tricky for us to actually line it up, should do a, a VLOOKUP type of formula and get it into a company sheet and align it the way that we have it here. So what I did is I went in here and I used the data split text to columns. And then um, I used a custom and then I used the... Um, um this character right here now i'm going to undo that because otherwise it will mess up my data but that's how i split it to columns and then what i was stuck with was was this url right here what i ended up with was this url right here and that actually we can then use as a unique identifier to line up the data in here did the same thing in here so then that way in here i would have a column which has the um uh, exact same URL structure as we have here in review. So as you can see the structure, um, and this is the one I showed there. So glass.com slash interview slash abnormal. And we have the same one here. So we use the um, data split text to columns to achieve that because of the um, most likely enzyme scraping um, type of technology they have in place there. Then with that, we got some help from JetGPT because I'm very far from a VLOOKUP or in this case, text join expert. So um, this is the query that, that we put together in the end where we get all the text into one single cell that will help us with analyzing it and will help us with making sure we don't end up with like 100 different columns. So we got the process. So how people felt about the process now um they, they usually go pretty in depth so they say okay you know it was a bit off to me or um has led to me concluding that uh it's, it's not a great company anything like that but these are you know several different types of feedback that so as you can see here's the the separator so this is let's say review number one review number two so we have all of those on one column so we can easily run that through gpt and ask it about you know commonalities or things that people mention. Then as you can see, people go pretty in depth. He gave the entire timeline um, about the entire process. So that was um, uh, interesting. He called it a 75 day nightmare. Then here you get the actual questions that are being asked during the interviews, which is absolute gold, obviously for recruiting platforms and, and, and similar um types of solutions so the actual questions the top three questions that are being asked then here we have um all the results so no offer um there's no offer offer denied or offer rejected and uh offer accepted those are the three options then the experience is either negative or positive then the rating as in was it an easy process or was it average or hard which I would assume is okay, do they ask really difficult questions, etc. And then held with uh, recruiter online, that type of information that is helpful for companies who say, okay, um, I want to target companies who work with external recruiters. This will help you um, find out, find companies who are open to working with recruiters. So that's, um, that's another way you can use this data. And these are actual titles that of the people who left reviews about the company. So we have this really big sheet right here. We put that all together um, using the text join. You know, we got these two different data sets from Appify. We all dumped it into Google Sheets and then we all put it together into this nice sheet right here. We download that and then we upload that back into Clay. So as you can see, we went from Clay to Appify to Google Sheets back into Clay, but it was a pretty efficient process uh, didn't take me that long to do all of that and going forward you know if this is something that you want to build for yourself pretty straightforward then we have you know the process in here so um 
these are all the different types of feedback that people have asked that people have left. We can run analysis on that. Then we have the no offer, et cetera. So let me show you how I'm using this data right here. Um, so I'm counting how many um, no offer, accepted offer and decline offers there are. So then you can see, um, for example, this will tell you if this number is really high, they're interviewing bad candidates. So the candidates that they're, you know, getting uh, in touch with, they, um, they, they're pretty much wasting their time with them because they're disqualifying them on the call. So they will tell you something about their recruiting process. Then, uh, the accept offer will obviously, if that number is very high, that means they're doing pretty good, which, uh, actually means that you maybe want to, um, prioritize reaching out to other companies, not to these guys, because they're likely not experiencing as much pain as others are. And then the client offer. Um, so could be a good indicator as in, if they have a really high decline offer, could be that they're experiencing a lot of pain around recruiting. Um, and if I were running a staffing company, I would use that one the most, but it could also be an indicator that maybe the, their, you know, their salary that they're offering just isn't really competitive. And that's why people are declining their offers or it could be, you know, you could interpret that in, in, the, in various different ways. Then the uh, negative and positive. So how did you experience the entire process, either negative or positive? So when they're the negative number, this will probably be my, let's say my main indicator. Um, if the negative is, you know, the negative count is really high, those will be companies who could very likely benefit the most from um, having someone help out with their recruitment process. And then another layer I added on top of that was to find their active jobs. So if they have a lot of open jobs and they're having a really hard time finding the right people, their pain just gets intensified, right? If, you know, they're, this, for example, it's negative, positive, like things aren't, are going okay, but not going great. Um, you could argue that, you know, they're not making offers and the people to whom they're not making offers, they're, they're pissed and they're leaving a bad review. They only have two jobs open. I wouldn't prioritize reaching out to this company, but this company right here, instead they, you know, the people aren't really enjoying interviewing with them. So there's something not going great there. Then they have a lot of open jobs. So chances are that they definitely want some help on the recruitment side of things. Then uh, you can go through this and there's different ways you can use that score. You can come up with a scoring model to say, okay, take these, these, and these numbers into account. And then you come up with a scoring model for, you know, your tier one accounts, tier two, tier three, for example. And then obviously you reach out to your tier one accounts first and from a different angle. Now you can go a lot more in depth here and you can then actually separate this again and say, okay, I want to see um, per role how things are lining up. So maybe for technical roles, their, their negative count is really high, but for let's say marketing roles, their negative count is really low. So they are having an issue recruiting the right technical people, or they're having an issue um, asking the right questions to technical people. So then if I was uh, running a technical staffing uh, solution or technical recruitment, recruiting solution, then that is something I would do. And that is something I will focus on. So in that case, if you have a really specific use case, or you just want to get really, really personalized, then you can drill down even further into this data. You can really dive into that part and really split things up again, and then really do this scoring per role or per, uh, per department. Um, or even per per source, so you could then see, okay, if they had a um, an interview with a recruiter, that usually ends up going towards negative, and if they had it directly with us, then it goes into positive. So, hey, the recruiter you're working with isn't performing well. Let us take over, or let us help that. Uh, let us help solve that, et cetera, et cetera. So, you can dive a lot deeper into this data, but for now, um, just giving you an idea of how you can build the data set and then you can you can see how you can apply that for yourself. This is how I would do it. Now, another thing I would not do, which is also pretty important, right? I would not call them out directly. And just to show you why, I had a pretty basic prompt right here saying, um, okay, you know, analyze these reviews and then tell me what do people 
like what is one specific thing they do not like about the process you don't want to use that in your email because no one likes being called out you cannot say hey looked at your glass door um it's awful like i don't know what you're doing but let me help people do not enjoy that right so instead you can use it for scoring i wouldn't call out directly just know that okay things are going really bad over there i can see that from the data i can even ask you know gpt why it's going really bad and then i can use that for scoring and reaching out to this company but i probably don't want to mention it directly instead i want to make sure that i'm reaching out and um, maybe uh because of the the GPT analysis that I'm running, I know which angle I want to take. So um, there was a lack of transparency in the rejection process and a long interview process. You can then say, okay, um, I can run a keyword analysis on that. And if long process is an issue and lack of transparency is an issue, then I want to pitch my futures that help with shortening the interview cycle, because that's one main future that we have for our products or service. And I want to make sure that they know that we can help with the transparency issue as well, because you can set up rejection templates and automatically send those out. Um, or based on the notes that you took, we have an AI writer that writes that template, or whatever. Like you can use it that way. That's how I would use it to then bucket your leads even further, right? So you know who has the biggest problem, the biggest pain. You want to then probably use AI or keyword filtering to find out why why you know they're experiencing that and you want to then tie that into your unique solution and how you would help solve that and that way you can personalize your outreach and personalize your emails that's how, how i would do it and i wouldn't call them out directly and say hey i read this in your review uh what the heck right that's how i would do it um and that's how we're building these data sets hopefully that gave you some ideas some inspiration how you could do it if this is something you want done for you and uh us handling the outreach for you as well then definitely always feel free to get in touch we can see um if there's um if there's a fit here if we can help you out there for now i appreciate you watching if you have any questions then feel free to drop a comment below wherever you're watching this and uh, hopefully i will see you in the next video Bye-bye.